Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back from a break. And I hope you spent a few minutes with the exhibit hall and had an opportunity to meet some of our partners. So uh, welcome to our next session uh, focused on workforce transformation. We have, uh, we have Joe Kringdon from the uh, Kringdon and Associates as well as Alego presenting. So Brianna from Alego and Joe, welcome. Uh, I'll turn it over to you. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to share. Awesome, thank you so much, Curtis. And thank you, Joe, for being here with me today. If you're not familiar with Alego, we are an all-in-one sales enablement platform that ensures sellers have the skills, knowledge, and content they need to optimize team success in a virtual world. Now, I'm excited to be here today with Joe, who is one of our partners. He has many years of experience in the financial services industry and lots of little nuggets of wisdom to share with you. Uh, with that, today we are going to talk about the asynchronous advantage, and we'll get into what that means. How to communicate, collaborate, and capture knowledge in a hybrid world. Now, Joe, I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself. Brianna, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, as noted, my name is Joe Kringdon. Um, I recently, well, a couple of years ago, retired from the financial services business, where I spent uh, nearly 40 years uh, equally divided primarily between the uh, wealth management side of the equation, where I was a branch manager at what is now Morgan Stanley in uh, branches in New York City, uh, Boston, and upstate New York. I uh, also was an advisor. Uh, and then I went to the dark side, if you will. I went to uh, work on the asset management side of the business, where I uh, worked with Putnam Investments, Pioneer Investments, and Columbia Threadneedle Investments. My last two stays were head of distribution, basically head of sales and marketing at both those organizations. And uh, I currently do some consulting with firms like Alego. And one of the reasons why I do a lot of consulting with Alego is because I am a two-time user. Uh, I brought Alego both to both my organizations at Pioneer and Columbia with a great deal of success. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how technology has changed and not to, to suggest that I'm a dinosaur, but just to give you some perspective and some context. I remember when I started with the asset management business, when our wholesalers would sort of distributed throughout the United States, whenever we wanted to get them information, we would mail them a weekly FedEx package called the wholesale package. It went on on Fridays. It arrived at their offices, uh, home offices on Saturday, and they un unpacked it and read what they needed to read and had the collateral they needed to have. Uh, if they needed anything on the, on the spot minute, if you will, they had to call in, get their inside wholesaler to, again, send the package to them via uh, FedEx or UPS or overnight mail. In addition, uh, we also, wholesalers, because they travel a lot and need to stay in touch with clients and people on the road, they used to carry cups of quarters and dimes and nickels to make phone calls. They would stop and basically get a pay phone and make a call. And obviously, mobile phones changed that dynamic dramatically. Uh, also, I remember when the wholesalers in the back of their trunk not only had all their literature, um, they also had uh, Matt, Brand McNally naps, maps. So they could sort of navigate their way through their territory, trying to get from one appointment to the next. And then lastly, uh, in terms of getting information to people, whether it's up product updates or uh, new product rollouts, most of that had to be done in physical in-person meetings, whether it be national sales meetings or regional sales meetings. I bring that up because technology obviously has accelerated this uh, and also allowed for a uh, great, great deal more efficiency, a great deal more agility. And also, as the topic of this conversation is about, asynchronous uh, ability, i.e. I doing things not live and in the moment, but basically when you need them. Great. So as Joe mentioned, the way we access information has changed dramatically. And as Joe and I were preparing for this session, and he was telling me a little bit about how things have changed over the years, again, not to age you, Joe, <laughs> all we could help but think about was um, if you had not made those changes over time and hadn't kept up with what was going on, then you were a laggard and you fell behind. And that's absolutely the case with today. So virtual selling is something that's here to stay and this hybrid environment is going to keep being our reality. So how can we continue to improve, grow, change, et cetera, over time? Uh, one of those ways is via asynchronous communication. So just a quick description here. Synchronous communication is anything that happens in real time. So this could be a Zoom meeting or it could be an in-person meeting. Anything that's happening at the same time you're next to that person having that conversation. 
Asynchronous is anything that's not simultaneous or time bound. So again, we'll get into some of the benefits of this and what we mean by that. Throughout this session, we're going to share the four transformative benefits of asynchronous communication. The first benefit is institutionalized knowledge, followed by informalized feedback and sharing, access content when you need it, where you need it, and coach and practice smarter. Now first, we're going to get into how to institutionalize knowledge and how that's a great benefit for your organization. Believe sales and business leaders know a lot of the great ideas in terms of at the point of sale come from your teams. It's the live action, hand to hand combat. And many of those learnings they, they share with their colleagues, they share with their managers, and it's done typically informally or either around the, you know, the proverbial water cooler or during breakouts when they have meetings. And what most firms recognize is that uh, when people leave or, or change jobs, been captured uh, for recall, they get lost forever. And in so doing, uh, you lose a little bit of your culture, you lose a little bit of your, uh, uh, you know, the, if you will. And studies, as you can see here, 79% of leaders said that there's probably a game-changing idea for their business that's been discussed among employees, but been never been captured or acted upon. Say that in forgotten a great idea that made a positive impact. So one of the benefits of asynchronous uh, communication of a masterclass or a Netflix library of re really in important in uh, institutional knowledge that you need to retain and act upon. In addition, you, you'll see here, uh, you know, recording and making these ideas available uh, is a real value to leaders. Um, I, I, I mentioned Masterclass. For those of you familiar with that uh, platform, it's basically a platform that allows you to watch, if you will, if you're trying to write a book, real life authors tell you what their process is. Or if you're an actor and you want to understand how you go about um, really nailing an audition. Um, the, creating a library of content around this institutional knowledge allows you to, to keep it, to share it, um, to, if you'll reinforce the culture that you have and, and you can grow from. Um, and this ability allows you to train and coach your teams. And also as you onboard people, they don't, if you will, they, they have the ability of uh, the benefit of sort of standing on the shoulders of people that have gone before them. You know, as you see from this stat here, 27% of leaders say they lose at least 250 million worth of institutional knowledge every year when employees leave. And 80% of leaders wish they created a searchable database that would, in essence, allow people to a query uh, the system for particular data points and golden nuggets, if you will. Um, it's sort of like being at the virtual bar with your, your sales leaders and being able to ask them questions um, in, in, uh, at, your, at the time that you need this information. Um, so in, in essence, what you want to use a, a, a tool like a Lego for is you don't lose that gold that we talked about from the sort of the water cooler experience. Again, I'm dating myself. Um, also, as you onboard people, you can assign them uh, particular videos. You could say, this is a video you need to know. This is really what we're, we stand for. Here's somebody who really talks, the, who really sort of positions our company well. Um, and th these people, you, the people you assign it to, you can A, uh, make sure that they watch it, how long they watch it for, and how many times they watch it. Um, and, and in essence, this allows you to capture moments that become learning moments. Um, you know, there is a stat that says you learn more from the things that you fail at or things that you win. Uh, many organizations that Allego works with does what they call win reports, which are videos around, here's how we won this piece of business. They also do in the same way, here's, how, here's what we did, didn't do well, and here's why we lost this business. And the idea is to sort of point out landmines and obstacles that other people can in the future can avoid. And again, it makes it easy to access uh, and find on their own time. Awesome, thank you, Joe. Now, the next point is informalized feedback and sharing. Um, 
again, uh, I give you the, the, the example in, in my business, as we had divisional managers riding with wholesales to provide feedback, they'd go on them with live on live calls. They would give them the feedback, uh, get dropped off the airport. Maybe they come back and write an email saying, hey, Brianna, when we got to get the last, this is what I think I told you you need to work on. And then when I come back to visit with you again, I can check up to see if you're working on it. By having a video library where you can share content back and forth, you can actually ask, hey, Brianna, last time we got together, I didn't. I thought you didn't do a great job on this thing. Can you send me your latest presentation on strategic income? Uh, I can view it. I can mark it up, send it back. She can view it. And then I can also assign her. I can say, hey, by the way, Billy Bob and Sharon do a great job on this. I'm going to send you the videos that they did. I'd like you to watch them and see if you can mimic them. So in, in essence, it gives people an opportunity to see what good looks like. Um, it's an opportunity to get, uh, you know, very timely feedback um, and also do it at their own time. Uh, so the importance of this is what I call message consistency. You know, when I walked into Columbia Threatening Needle Investments, we had a, a sales organization of 125 people out in the field. We had 150 different products. And when we sort of did the, my leadership and I did the sort of uh, walking around and asking people what they, what, what the national anthem for Columbia Threatening Needle is, you know, how do you position the, the company? If you ask 10 people, you got eight different answers. None of them were wrong. They were just different. And with that, you don't have the ability to have a brand in the marketplace. You don't have the ability to resonate upon the things that you think you're really good at. So what a Lego allowed us to do is to sort of frame up around the national anthem. This is what this is what we want you to say. This is how you want you to say it. And by the way, here are the videos of those people who do it well. And we want you to practice it. And, and as we sort of scaled this out and got this to people, while it wasn't the sole contributing factor, it was a contributing factor, our market share went up 25% during my tenure there because I think people were singing from the same hymnal and basically sort of punching the important points that they, we thought were important. And also productivity went up because people all of a sudden feel, felt confident that they were telling the right story at the right time. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. I love that story. It's I'm sure for many of the training and learning leaders here, they're thinking, I want everybody to have the same message when they're going out to the market. They don't want them coming out of their training with completely different messages. So thank you for sharing that. Next up is access content when you need it, where you need it. Um, what, what happens is that, you know, people, especially in today's world, they, they basically consume content and learn in different, very, very many different ways. They can read material, they can get emails, et cetera. But by and large, if you look at your own life, um, you typically no longer pull out the user's manual to do something. You know, the example I use is last week I had to change the key fob on my BMW and I didn't reach in the glove compartment to get my user's manual. I went on YouTube, typed in the name, you know, key fob change for BMW, blah, blah, blah. And I watched the two minute video and I was able to do it myself. In the same way, as you, as people need information to learn about their, their craft, their jobs, um, to get better at, at, at the things that they do. By creating videos, they are able to watch them as they need them. So, for example, as they prepare for the week, they know which clients they're going to go see so they could watch the videos around. Okay, here is what those clients are prioritizing at this point in time. Here's an example of Brianna giving a presentation to that particular client. Um, so that, that you're, you're pulling content when you need it. Uh, and why and, and 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 when you need it, and also for the purpose that you need it for at that particular time, um, and it can be done with a Lego. You could do it whether at the comfort of your home or sitting at a coffee shop waiting to go into your next meeting. So in essence, it allows you to sort of be prepared at all times. Uh, and, and not that you're gonna. I often get asked, is, "Does this replace live meetings?" No, it doesn't replace it, but it supplements them. And, and many times you're, uh, there are things that uh, are, can be tedious to sit through. Uh, and as you know, even if you have them in a conference call or a regional meeting, they may not be paying attention, if you will, because they're multitasking, et cetera. What having a, 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 a Lego, you can, A, they can go at their own pace, and then B, there are metrics behind it to see whether or not they've engaged with the content, how long they engage with it for. And you could also have quizzes for certification so that you could see whether or not they understood the content that they were consuming.
I think we're next slide, Brianna. Okay, I think I've, Brianna I think is frozen, but I, I think what I will tell you is that the example I will give you is in terms of being able to use this for uh, sort of replace live, live in-person sessions. Uh, we were rolling out a product at Columbia Thread Needles that was considered a um, very complicated product. And while we, were the, while we were doing that, our regulators were in auditing the firm as they don't normally do. They got wind of the fact that we were rolling out this product and they went to my head of compliance and asked, how do you know that your people really understand the product? How do you know that they know who's suitable for it? Head of compliance came to me and asked me and my team, that's a good question, how do we know? And we said, what we'll do is we'll create a Lego, A, on the presentation, we'll create a Lego, B, on what the suitability requirements are, and we'll create a Lego of the A's and B's of what the product stands for. You know, what specifically is in the product, how it works. And in essence, we were able to put in uh, quizzes so that people had to A, watch it, B, had to pass the quiz. So before they were allowed to sell it, they sort of got uh, certified. Um, so it, it was a way for us to satisfy our needs to roll out the product uh, seamlessly. And also from a compliance standpoint, we were able to satisfy a regulator that we were able to memorialize the fact that our people understood what they were uh, presenting to clients and who they were presenting it to. Um, I'll stop there for a second, and uh, before, I don't know if Brianna will come back or not to see if there are any questions that anybody might have at this time. Okay, having no questions. Uh, uh, let me also sort of... One of the benefits of asynchronous uh, communication, if you will, is um, many of you in your own lives have used things like um, Netflix, uh, use things like Spotify, in essence, to curate things that you want to enjoy, listen to, et cetera. Uh, and I brought up before the fact that there's a, a platform called Masterclass um, if you want to learn something or bone up on a skill that you didn't have before. In essence, what a Lego does, and in the asynchronous way, she's back. <laughs> um, it, that's okay. Um, it, it allows you to create content uh, and house it in a place that people can search it. Uh, people can organize it in a way that they need it. So they can do things like, again, in my world, we had presentations on how to manage your territory. We had presentations on how to manage your time. Um, and so... These were sort of go-to curriculums for our sales organization. Um, I think I've already reviewed this slide. Uh, the last is the coach in practice smarter. Um, I was dancing a little bit there. <laughs> um, my apologies. This is, this that's okay. My internet in the office dropped out, so my apologies. <laughs> um, you know, uh, again, in the old days, you would a wholesaler would, would go out, he or she would go out with their manager and their manager would observe the sales calls and provide in, in sort of in-person feedback and then uh, check back when they're back in the field again. What this allows you, what coaching and practicing smart, it basically speaks to the fact that, you know, to use a, the, the uh, athletic analogy, you can review the game film. You can make a presentation uh, on a particular product or a positioning statement, send it to your uh, manager and he or she can grade you on it and send it back. As I said before, they can also send you uh, examples of videos of people who really nailed it. You know, this is what sort of what, what good looks like. Um, the ability for a Lego, not only for you to watch it, but there's also in moment in time, you can type in questions in moment in time, or you can point out particular things. You could say, in this presentation, you should pause here for effect. Um, and when you send it back to the user, they'll see that note and they'll obviously hopefully incorporate that into the way, way that it goes. So what this allows a manager to do or coaches to do is to create a library that anybody can access to get better. Uh, and again, I bring up the fact of onboarding people. When you onboard people, while they are, it is important to still spend time with them face to face. You can assign them certain videos 
and you can ask them to review them. And then also, if you needed to, you can embed quizzes to make sure that they understand what they've consumed. Absolutely. So with that, I'm just going to share a short client case study, and then we'll just recap these four points we've discussed. So I'm going to share a story about a North American bank-owned wealth management firm that we work with. Uh, what happened, their challenge they had was that they lacked timely access to critical information from portfolio managers and strategists. So they had weekly conference calls and position papers, and that just was too slow for increasingly volatile markets. So internal support teams, maybe such as folks like yourself on this call, were wasting valuable time repeatedly fielding the same questions and trying to train and educate folks on the fly as they went. Now, the solution is that PMs, economists, and other eternal strategy, strategists created short videos for advisors from week to week. So again, just short videos, very quick to put together. And they advisors could prepare for client conversations by watching just the right video before their calls. And when there, something went on in the market, the markets hiccuped, PMs and strategists could arm those advisors with fresh talking points to quell any client fears using quick videos. Uh, so one thing Joe and I were discussing as we were chatting about this case study is that Oftentimes, when you're working with strategists and portfolio managers, they might balk at the amount of time it's going to take to train up these advisors and get them the information. This is a super quick uh, solution to make sure that they are getting the information they need at the right time, again, asynchronously. So in the end, those advisors gained the timely knowledge they needed, and they simultaneously made more efficient use of subject matter experts' time. There was an 8% increase in AUM per advisor as competitors suffered outflows, and a steady stream of insights were now available for advisors to share with clients. Lastly, there was better collaboration overall established between advisors and internal staff. I'll share a short quote here. So, with all the deep knowledge and expertise existing on one side of the company, it felt absurd the other side who needed it would ever miss out. Now, advisors turn to video channels set up by asset class, root strategy, or investment goals for the latest and greatest in a format they actually engage with. And that was the CEO of Alternative Investments at this North American wealth management firm. So again, I mean, I think a lot of us here are maybe thinking, we want to get folks engaged in our training. How can we do that? This is one way to do so. Just recapping the four transformative benefits that we've discussed, those are institutionalized knowledge, informalized feedback and sharing, access content when your team needs it, where they need it, and coach and practice smarter. Now at this time, I will turn it over for Q&A. If you have any questions, please include them in the chat or the Q&A section of this. Now, Joe, I saw a question come in, um, and we hear this from a lot of our clients, around compliance. So do you ever hear from compliance that, oh no, we don't want these short videos to be created? Do you have any stories there that you can share? Um, while you were out, I, sh I shared the story of, uh, about FINRA being in and the compliance of people come to us. And I think that was the compliance department, once they recognized that they could use this as a point of communication, they actually asked to be a channel so that they could uh, send out messaging, but also in the background collect metrics on people that have watched videos, people that passed the quizzes, et cetera. So that was critically important. Um, and that was one way in which, if you will, compliance was very much agreeable to it. The other thing that typically in the questions we get when we talk about this with other prospects or clients is there, there is a project management flow that typically, at least in the uh, asset management business that needs to be required for marketing out to, through compliance because you can't have any communications that's not compliance blessed. The, a Lego just becomes one component of that project flow. So it doesn't add any additional burden. It basically, instead of being a, a, a fact sheet or an item on your, on your website, it's a video. Uh, another question that just came in, how do you create the best in class knowledge videos? Are you recording meetings in real time? Uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, I'll give you an example. We used to do a weekly huddle in our home office with all of our inside salespeople. And many of the outside salespeople were bummed, if you will, such a technical term, that they couldn't participate. So what we started to do was we actually would record those videos for a Lego and then chunk. It was a half an hour meeting. 
and we would chunk them out into the, if you had a portfolio manager, you'd do the portfolio manager segment to put that on the platform. If you had a product manager, you'd put the product manager and you put the strategist. So that was one way to do it. Second way to do it was you, you kind of have to make sure that your leaders in the clubhouse, the people that everybody respects, that that, that man or woman who is sort of thought to be the uh, sort of bell cow, if you will, um, ask them to put together a, a video. And it doesn't have to be Hollywood quality. Um, it, it's more YouTube quality. So, for example, we had one person who was a little camera shy and they basically we said, pretend you're you're you're, you're uh, singing in the shower. And this person was very creative. And basically, while well, he, was, he wasn't in the shower, basically, he, he had a T-shirt on. He said, I'm here to talk to you about blah, blah, blah. And, and we had a lot of fun. Um, so you heard uh, sessions and put them on, chunk them out and put them in, on the platform. But you go to there. The other thing I will also mention, too, is like most of these things, you can't hoist it up. Embrace it. One of the first things that we did is I recorded a video and I was often recording video. Saying people would know that this was important. Uh, we eventually embedded as part of our bonus structure, sort of how much airtime did you devote to a Lego? Because um, we really wanted it to be part of our DNA. Great. Thank you, Joe. That concludes our questions for today. I want to thank everybody for listening in and thank you, Joe, again, for sharing all this information with us and for being our partner. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to check out our booth at this event or go to alego.com and request a demo. Again, thank you all so much. I hope you find value in the remainder of the conference. Thank you all.